I want to show you how you can create a form and fill it out electronically. As you see here, I have a table that looks like a form, and it's easy to see in the table where to insert, like the title and the title cell, and the first name, last name, and so on. These other fields, like the software interest, is a software that the client wants us to create a training video on. And the media type is after we create the training videos, how they want us to deliver it to them, like on DVD or as MP4s, so they can download it. And then the estimated time of arrival or completion. And then is the software that we're creating training videos on common, where we can go ahead after we create it and give it to the client, repackage it and sell it to other clients so we can make a lot more money as opposed to it just being proprietary to that company, in which case we'll have to charge you more. So in that case, it's not common. And then any comments and the action taken. Like when we got the new client's information, did we do a follow-up with a phone call, an email, or a postcard, or all three? So when it comes to setting up a form, you don't have to do it in a table format. In fact, if it helps, you let me go ahead and select the table. Come up here, click on the Layout tab, go to the Data Group, and convert it to text. We'll do tab delimited and click okie dokie. Table disappears, but not the text. Because remember, the text was white. So when it got rid of the table, we have white text against a white background. So let's come up here on the home tab to the font group and choose our color black. And there they are. So you can go ahead and have it arranged any way you want. The trick is, is that you want to use the form feature or the form fields that you can go ahead and insert a field right here that they can advance to and type in the title, then their first name that they can advance to. And when I say advance, it's by using the tab key. Right now, without the table, when I hit the tab key, it pushes everything from, well, right here over to the first name. And then if I type in the first name and hit the tab key, it pushes the first name over to the last, and it's just a big mess. So that doesn't work. Even so, if I undo all this and I go back to the table, and I type in the title, Mr. and then Kurt Kershaw, tab. Well, it doesn't go to the next available field. It goes to the label for that field, which is street. But if you use the form field feature, you can go ahead and designate the areas, like right here, with the box that says that when you tab to it, that that's where they need to fill it in. And so when you lock down the form, after you're done inserting those form fields, then you can go ahead and it'll tab from one field to the next and bypass the labels because those aren't form fields or fields that we can go ahead and input information. Let me go ahead and hit undo a couple of times. And that brings up another good point about using the form feature, the form fields, is that the more you can control the input of the front end user for data entry, the more accurate data you're going to get. So for example, like title, if we have Mr., Mrs., and Ms., Instead of having them typing it in, I could insert a form field, a drop down, that they can click and choose from one of the three, as opposed to them typing it in. Like if they type in Mr. with MR and no period, or MR with the period, you see I'm going to get different data results, even if they type it in like M I S T E R and spell it out. So if I can control that, I'm going to have more accurate data, cleaner data, as it were. And so to be able to go ahead and insert the form fields, either within the cells of the table here, or if you don't have a table, just below the text or to the right of it, however you arranged it, you want to come up here and add the Developer tab. So let's right-click. And I would say anywhere on the tab, but if you right-click on the Styles, you don't get the option to customize, as I do over here, the ribbon. So customize the ribbon. Bring up the developer because, let me click okie dokie, when you do that on the developer tab, you get the controls. And the controls that we want to insert, or the form feature fields, is right there. It's legacy tools. Click on it, and there's the legacy form. And the first three that we'll be working on, well, the only three here, is the text box field, where you just add a field for them to add text or numbers. Then the next one is check boxes. So that way you can control what they can choose, like with the action taken down below. Did they make a phone call, email, or send a postcard? You can have all those three listed and then have check boxes that they can only check one or the other or two or all three. Or if you want something that's more limiting, where it's an either or and not an and, like with the check boxes, you can use this one right here, the drop down form field, as we talked about in the title cell. When they click on it, they can only choose one of the three. They can't choose two or all three. So let's go ahead and get started and do just that.
So make sure that you got the cursor where you want to insert that field and then come up here, click on Legacy Tools, and let's add our drop down. Click on it. Adds a gray box, that's the form field. Now keep in mind when you're adding these fields, you're in edit mode. So for the drop down arrow to work, we have to first add the field and then set it up. How many items they can choose from from the drop down list, like Mr., Mrs., Ms., and so on. In any case, once you insert it and you make all the customizations, when you lock it, then the front end user can go ahead and fill in the form. Right now, we're in edit mode. And I'll show you how to lock it later on. So let's go ahead and to bring up the properties for this field so we can tweak it, customize it, and say, okay, these are the choices they get with the drop down field. You can do it one of three ways. You can either right click on it and go to properties, brings up the properties with the drop down items, close out, or with your cursor flashing in it, come up here in the controls group. You got properties there as well, of course. Let me close out, or you can just go ahead and double click and it brings it up. So for the drop down items, we talked about Mr. And then I can either go ahead and click add, or because the button is highlighted, it means it's an active button. So when I hit the enter key on the keyboard, it's like me clicking on it. Mrs. Enter and Miss Enter. And then that's it. So I can go ahead and click Okie Dokie, and when I do that, the default one is going to be up at the top, Mr. So when somebody starts filling in this form, if most of the clients aren't Mr., they're Mrs., well, then I would default it to that. So that way, they don't have to click as many times to be able to change it. Again, at the majority are Mrs. Or, if you want, you can go ahead and do something like select one. That way, it flags them to not bypass it in case if they forget to select the title and they just typed in their name in the first name field and last name, in so which case you've got Sally left as Mr. if that was the default. So instead, we'll say select one and to make it the default for that field, let's go ahead and move it up. So when we lock the form, that will be the item showing. And I don't know about you, but when I see that select one, Okay, missed it. I didn't actually select it. So I'd click on that and choose one of the three down below. And then, of course, you can always remove the ones that you don't like, but I want to add it and well, let's move it up again here. And then below that, we have the bookmark. So, as you recall in an earlier training video, you can use this in a cross reference if you watch my cross reference training video. What that means is that on page two of this document, I have a letter that I can go ahead and reference this field which currently says drop down one, that it will pull in whatever the item is. So if somebody selects Mr., I can put that down below on page two as a cross reference with Deer, and then it'll pull in the cross reference to here, and if it's Mr., it'll pull in Mr. Isn't that slick? That way I can go ahead and have a letter already prepared from whatever's filled in these fields here by cross referencing that field and the name of it, which I don't know about you, but drop down one. That's not going to help me identify this field when I want to do a cross reference. So, how about instead of drop down one, we actually name the field title? Okay. So, when I choose from a list of bookmarks that I want to reference, I want to reference the title field. So, down below on page two, after deer, it'll pull in, well, whatever their title is. And if they didn't select one and it just had select one, okay, that's not good because then I'll say deer select one and then their first name and last name if I cross-reference those other fields, which I'll show you how to do. But right now this is in setup mode, so if you're like, hey, what's the bookmark for? Because you can actually pull in that field, the information from it, and in this case, or the example I'm going to show you later on, into a letter. So let's go ahead and click Okie Dokie, and there you go, select one. Now can you click on it and select one? Of course not, because we're in edit mode. We haven't locked the form down for the front end user to go ahead and start filling it in. So let's go ahead and do first name, come up here, click on the legacy toolbox, and this is a text box for them to enter in text. So go ahead and select the AB text box field, adds it, bring up the properties with the double click, and you get some options here. Do you want regular text in this field? You want the data type to be number, date, current date, well, let's go with regular text. And then as far as the maximum length, you could go ahead and let's go to two. Well, that would work if it was something that you want two characters in, like the state, instead of Utah, UT, or New York, NY. In any case, I don't want it to be like that. So let's go ahead and go back down to unlimited and not limit their first name. 
and then the default text well you can have a prompt here because right here it says first if the front end user is looking at that going first what first time I'm typing in first what does that mean well help them out type in you want their first name and so after I click okie dokie it'll say first name here so when the front end user is filling this out it's like oh that's what first is for first name then when they go ahead and they start typing it'll replace the default text with well whatever they type in there for the first name like Sally Joe whatever and then down below that the text format click on it do you want everything in uppercase and notice that when I select it up here in the default text it'll have everything in uppercase so you have an idea of what the format is going to look like here before you click okie dokie lowercase first capital meaning that well, you're not going to see it here because it's not going to convert it the first capital is the first word out of all the words that are in there is going to be in uppercase so let me show you so if I type in everything lowercase and then I select it again or click in it so there you go first capital so it took the first word and put the first letter in it in uppercase and everything else remained lowercase that's what that is or you can do title case so the first letter in each word is in uppercase cool and then down below for the bookmark we want to identify this if we want to pull it into another part of the document as a cross-reference to pull in the first name here in the form you could do first name and then click OK right no because the bookmark name is not valid as you recall my bookmark training video it doesn't like certain characters the least of which is a space so we can hit the backspace key keep it slammed all together or do an underscore to make it look like there's a space but it satisfies the bookmark naming convention here with no space and then go ahead and click okie dokie and there you go first name and let's do one more for last name click in there come up here click on the drop down arrow text box double click I want the default text is last of course I can type it in whatever case uppercase lowercase it's the text format that will change everything so I can do title case and it fixes it for me so that way when somebody comes to this field and they type in their last name in lowercase it'll take the first letter in the last name and put it in uppercase and regular text unlimited things we talked about here then the bookmark will be last underscore name and then I can just hit enter on the keyboard and there we go now with these other fields like street city let me just go ahead and quickly fill those in and then we'll go over the rest because you know once you learn how to do something as basic here I don't want to slow you down by repeating it so let me finish up street and city and then we'll pick up with the state here in just a second now to enter the state field let's come up here click on the box to text box Oh, and by the way, if you need to get rid of a field, just go ahead and select it, hit the delete key, and it's gone. Let's go ahead and reinsert that text box, double click. Now, for the default text, if I type in state, but I want the maximum length to be two characters, well, you're going to confuse the data entry as well as Word because the maximum length is two and you've got more than two. So when you click okie dokie, you get the raspberries because Word's saying, come on, practice what you preach. If your maximum length is two, then you can only have as the default text two characters, as in, well, you could do ST. Let's click okie dokie, and let's go back down to unlimited so I can have my extra text there. And then the text format, we'll do title case, and then of course the bookmark, if I want to reference this field in another part of the document, so I can recognize that field, its state, and then click okie dokie. Now let's do zip code, come up here and add a text box when you double click on it you can convert it from a text text box to a number field you can type in the default number like if you want to do all zeros I suppose that's okay but if the front end user forgets to update that you're gonna end up with an accurate data for that client in any case it's up to you then the maximum length let's do five digits and if somebody tries to type in more than that it won't let them and if they get so frustrated that they don't know what's going on you may want to help them out with some help text go ahead and click on add help text and you can do it one of a couple of ways you can add help information when they're in the field by them hitting the F1 key or on the status bar when they're in the field just look down below again on the status bar there to be able to see 
what you typed in or if you have an auto text entry which we covered in an earlier training video you can watch the video on auto text you can select it and choose it over here in any case I don't have any so I don't get the option let's go ahead and just type it in so selecting type your own five digits only please or this form will self-destruct let's go ahead and select that and copy it so I can show you that you can not only view it in the status bar but also when you hit the F1 key as well type your own text control V as in Victor to paste it click okie dokie and we'll go over that once we lock the form and start entering in the data into the fields which we'll do in the next training video but right now we're designing it so let's go ahead and say the bookmark for this is going to be zip for zip code and oh we can choose the number format let me click on the drop down there you have zero that in Excel it makes the numbers visible and then 0.00, .00 not only displays whole numbers but also two numbers after the decimal and then when you got a pound symbol in conjunction with the zero the desired result is to display the large numbers like in thousands with commas as you can see there you got percentages in any case go ahead and choose your flavor or you don't have to do all zeros you can do pound symbols I got a total of five form a number format so you can tweak it a little bit here some flexibility and let's go ahead and click okie dokie now these other fields they're pretty much the same in that we learn how to insert a drop down field and text box fields so I'll finish the rest of the fields here until we get to the action taken because there I want to introduce you to the third and final field which is going to be the checkbox field so go ahead and take a water break when you get back I'll have it done you see what happens when you blink? It's magic. In any case, I've got all these filled out here, the things that we covered. Next, I want to introduce you to the checkboxes. So action taken, there are three types. They can send off a postcard, email, or phone call. So I want to do it this way. I'm going to come up here, toolbox to checkbox, hit the space bar, and say phone call. Hit enter. Let's add another. And let's do email. And then I want to be able to add one over to the right. So let me click after phone call. Now I can't hit the tab key, as you recall, within a table because then it goes to the next cell. But if I want to tab within the table, hold down the control key, then hit tab. Okay, it goes over just a skosh because the tab is right there. So let me control tab again. There we go. I mean, I could have hit the space bar several times, but trying to keep the coding down as minimal as possible so it's easier to edit and or use more advanced features. So in any case, I think right there is pretty good. Let me come up here and do that and say postcard. Now, if you want to be able to get into the properties of the checkboxes, i.e. double click, you can see that you can change the size of it instead of automatically yay big. You can say it's going to be exactly eight point the default value could be not checked or checked and then for check one if I want to cross reference this check one is not going to mean anything to me but if I type in action underscore phone call that's going to mean more to me and then I can go ahead and click okie dokie and oh see how it shrunk there eight point okay let's go ahead and double click and do that for the rest exactly eight point and then this one is then hit enter and then of course double click on this guy exactly eight point and postcard okay now that we covered all three fields like the drop down for selecting one and then the regular text field to add text and the check boxes for them to go ahead and either check one two or the other two or all three we need to be able to lock down the form so it's no longer in edit mode so the front end user can then come up here and actually click on this and it gives them a selection like Mr. Mrs. and Ms. So be a good neighbor. Go ahead and watch the next training video to learn how to do a lockdown so the front end user can do his thing and to be able to actually enter data into the form fields. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.